extremely important. Now, the last thing, I guess we have limited time. Um, the uh, various people in the Duma, right, the state Duma there in Moscow have been saying that this campaign is slated to go on to the Orthodox Christmas, meaning what, January 7th in the West, I think. Uh, yeah. How do you see it developing? Any ideas about where it's where it's going? Well, uh, I hope uh, that uh, uh, Russian military efforts there in the region are are going to uh, to uh, uh, win this war and uh, to uh, to make uh, uh, to to bring uh, Syrian uh, to bring Syria uh, uh, to to bring peace in Syria again, and so that uh, people uh, uh, refugees can come home and can uh, uh, once again rebuild their uh, peaceful life and uh, uh, unite their families, build uh, build their uh, broken houses, and so on and so forth. So uh, I hope. Uh, uh, I hope we will win and uh, uh, the peace uh, will be on this land. Wonderful. Stanislav, we're going to need you frequently now in this phase, okay? So please keep your Friday evenings a little bit open okay. for us. Okay, I will. I will. Soon, Thank okay? you very much. And you said the magic word, win the war. Win. Who ever heard of winning against terrorism? We've never heard that here. That's a real new thing. Welcome back to uh, World Crisis Radio. This is Webster Tarpley reporting in Washington, D.C. And now we are honored to be joined by Commissioner Marcus Mohammed. He is a commissioner of the city of Benton Harbor, Michigan. And of course, the people in the audience know something about this through the, the appearances of uh, Reverend Edward Pinckney here on the show, also from that area. But now we want to get uh, the story because we're coming up to a an election, and that will be in the first week of November. It's going to be Commissioner Marcus Mohammed competing with the current mayor, the incumbent uh, Reverend, uh, that is to say, uh, Mayor Hightower. So this is a is an important uh, political choice. So uh, Commissioner Mohammed, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And uh, how do you see the situation? What should our what should our audience know? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for reaching out uh, and inviting me on your show. Uh, I'm honored to have the opportunity to speak to your listening audience uh, regarding the issues, uh, my candidacy, and the outlook for the November election. Uh, we were uh, blessed by the residents to come out of the primary as the top vote getter. Uh, there was Bishop James Atterbury, who was a contender, along with, as you mentioned, Mayor James Hightower. Uh, and one candidate spent 25000 in the primary. Another candidate spent 15000 uh, for the primary, and we didn't exceed $500. So uh, the people... I sent a strong message uh, that this election uh, will not be uh, purchased or auctioned off to the highest bidder, but the residents and citizens of the city of Benton Harbor are looking for a substantive change and will not stop until uh, that's realized. So if I could... Uh there was a, a preliminary runoff election, and you got the most votes in that compared to Hightower also? Yes, sir. Uh, well, we came wow. in first. Uh, Hightower came in second. And the person who was eliminated, uh, Bishop James Atterbury, came in third. Uh, so the wind uh, is behind us. Uh, however, uh, we know that uh, playing on Saturday is a little different than playing on Sunday. Uh, so the general election has a different complexion. Uh, you know, it's October uh, 9th at this date, and uh, we have a long way to go yet. And it's a long way between the ground and the stirrup when getting on a horse. So we're not taking anything for granted. Uh, we're looking at it at zero zero. Uh, but the pulse and the response from the people has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, so we do have a 
uh, optimistic outlook. Uh, however, we're being realistic because we know that we're up against not just uh, the incumbent per se, uh, but we're fighting against, you know, a machine uh, that has been in place for uh, some time. Uh, so we have to exhaust all means and measures uh, to run a organized uh, legal uh, grassroots campaign uh, to electrify, enlighten, and uh, make the residents and people inspired to come out uh, to vote for change. Uh, so we're excited, and we are up for the challenge. All right, wonderful. Now, uh, if it's you against Mayor Hightower, um Maybe you could define for us the, the differences on the issues or governing style or any other consideration you think is important. Well, you know, uh, I think that Mayor James Hightower, um, you know, has done a adequate job of management uh, of declining affairs. Uh, however, the city of Benton Harbor is in need of a visionary and in need of new leadership that can bring about new ideas, uh, creativity, and just a new political uh, apparatus uh, that will spring economic development that will not just be uh, on Main Street, uh, but will be in the neighborhoods uh, where the residents and the people uh, are able to realize the changes uh, and the uh, benefits of jobs, uh, development, as well as business, uh, which has been missing for some time. Uh, the city of Benton Harbor currently is the uh, poorest city in the state of Michigan. Uh, per capita, we have the highest convicted felon rate. Uh, we recently was rated as the worst city or, or most unsafe city to live in. Uh, the governor just recently sent a task force um, where the state police director, Colonel E2, along with his urban initiative, cabinet person came to Benton Harbor because we are on the uh, most violent list uh, mm -hmm. in the nation. Uh, so it's clear that the status quo uh, is not sustainable. And Mayor James Hightower respectfully, from my perspective, represents the status quo. I don't know if you're familiar with Maurice and Dick McDonald who were the founders of McDonald's. Uh, but right. when they were uh, over it, it was not a mom-pop shop, but it was only in a couple cities. And it was not until another gentleman who had the vision mm -hmm. that the brothers did not have, even though they were the founders. Uh, and it was said that the uh, law of the lid where there was a lid on their leadership because they were managers, but they were not visionaries. So when it was brought by another individual who had a vision, then McDonald's now, as you know, is a global enterprise because All someone right. with vision took it to the next level. And my candidacy represents that. Um, and that's the major difference between Mayor James Hightower and Commissioner Muhammad. Um, Commissioner Muhammad, I'd like to give your um, website if I could, but uh, we've run out of time. So maybe we get you back to report on your campaign uh, before the election once or twice, if you'd like. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio, Webster Tarpley in Washington, D.C. We will be following that Benton Harbor situation and... Um, We'll we'll find a way to uh, to get you uh, Commissioner Mohammed's uh, website. 
So uh, a couple of other items left over from this main uh, Syrian issue. We had hoped to bring a, um, a report from Damascus, but we have been getting some very good source reports from an unimpeachable uh, source. And the word there was this famous air incident of the Russian plane supposedly straying. I think it's really close to the Syrian borderline, not going in, but coming into the area that the Turks uh, the Turks claim to be their uh, sort of extended airspace. You have to remember, first of all, Turkey violates everybody's airspace, left and right. They violate the maritime limits of Greece. They send planes into northern Iraq all the time and into Syria, of course, all the time to bomb Kurds, to bomb anybody but ISIS. So the Turks are one big fraud on this stuff, right? It's a lot of baloney what they're uh, pushing. But that was the formal cause for this NATO meeting, right? This was supposedly that, um, oh my God, Turkish airspace has been uh, violated. So this was the posturing of the strange love, the killer pedant Ashton Carter, right? This is somebody with no real military experience, right? No real historical grasp. This is a utopian. He's a utopian in the sense of Herman Kahn and the Hudson Institute and the world targets in Megadeth. So get ready. The Tax Wall Street Party is now going to go to work on Ashton Carter, and you'll know a whole lot more about him uh, next week. No, notice also the White House is leaning the other way, certainly. The White House has announced that the program of the Pentagon to train those phantomatic moderate terrorist rebels, and we know this is this simple fraud, right? They don't exist. It's a revolving door. That is, that is now going to be um, suspended. It's going to be over the $500 million to produce five moderate terrorist rebels on the ground. And all that equipment went to al-Qaeda. Uh, a lot of it, I think, a lot of it went to line the pockets of Turkish officials and otherwise just a bunch of uh, terrorist rebels who took the money uh, and ran. So the CIA part, though, continues. The Pentagon is giving up, but the CIA is continuing. So uh, all those people out there, I wonder what, what uh, certain forces like LaRouche will have to say about the fact that it's only the CIA that seems to be uh, continuing with this um, this effort. Uh, the other thing is the White House says that they want to give money for military forces in Syria. They're not going to give any more tow missiles, the anti-tank missiles. They're not going to give any more of the um, more sophisticated man pads, right? The surface to air missiles that can be operated by one person and even sometimes carried by one person. Uh, but even there, the idea seems to be that the privileged recipients of the aid are gonna be the Kurds. So there's a collision with Turkey coming up. So even rudimentary military equipment for the Kurds would be a good thing. Obviously, Better military equipment should be given uh, to the Kurds. The Kurds were your obvious choice the whole time. And we hear on National Public Radio and other places all of this tender concern for those sensitivities of those wonderful Turkish allies. And because they have been stabbing the United States in the back with the help of these subversives, Alan Petraeus uh, and that group. So um, that's uh, that, I think, rounds out the... Uh, the Syrian question. Uh, did I mention that Ben Carson is in favor of a no-fly zone and uh, all the rest of that mumbo-jumbo and half-baked ideas? Uh, I hope so. Uh, Hillary Clinton, of course, we know it. Um, and you can go through uh, the group. Another prize thing from today is that the British Foreign Secretary uh, speaking at this meeting, uh, whitewashing Turkey, he says, look, we don't like Erdogan because he, you know, he has these... Uh, bad uh, human rights policies, right? He jails all the journalists. He's so oppressive. But he says, in the context of the neighborhood, Erdogan is actually not that bad. Uh, so, and remember, the most powerful argument of the warmongers so far is the drone at the White House. And maybe there'll be 
a security breach. How about that? Maybe the wonderful Secret Service who gave us uh, Dallas and uh, 